Hey everyone, it's Rai. Definitely a screen if you are watching this as it releases uh, that you haven't seen in a while, but here is my Coastal Liberty Guide. Um, this has been requested too many times. I lost count. Um, it's something that I'm particularly strong as a player at, um, and I see so many new players screw up. It's a very delicate thing. Um, I don't want to... I, I need to emphasize that this is an intermediate guide and not a beginner guide. Um, so if you don't know how to play normal Liberty, there is no chance you will ever learn how to play this. So go figure out normal Liberty, go hit your 75 unis, and then come back, okay? So I, I need to set that caveat because... This is, you will fail so bad, and the coast is so punishing if you don't figure it out. Uh, if you don't know how to play like the fundamentals, so learn the fundamentals first, then come here. Okay. Now, here's some more caveats for you. Um, okay, so the first part is the happiness is slow. A lot of what we're going to be doing is going to be on luck cities. It's going to be first ringing cities um, for. A point uh, first ringing luxes sorry uh, we're not gonna be playing for greed we're gonna be playing to stay alive um, we're gonna be playing for speed but as well as for scaling um, oftentimes if you do the wrong build order or you're not controlling and you're not planning ahead uh, your culture you might not hit medieval in time which all except one sieve it could be very very taxing for um, there's I, I can't stress this enough. There is huge gold problems that occur in Coastal Liberty. You will burn so much gold, except if one sieve. One sieve kind of breaks that rule. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, but you will burn so many uh, gold problems. Another thing, uh, as you're weaving settlers, a lot of times you're not going to be weaving workers. You're going to be weaving in scouts. And that's for another reason. Um, for the below reason, barb archers are the devil and properly navigating barb archers is 100% a skill. Um, and it's something you have to learn, but it can be very, very punishing. So when I, I'm going to encourage a lot of newer players that building extra scouts is not, not a bad thing. This is supposed to be a scaling type build. It's not about complete speed. You're, you're not looking to kill your neighbor at, at, at chariots or at, at crossbows typically, right? A lot of the time we're, we're looking to hit unis and we're, we're looking to get into industrial and then just be a complete menace or go to frigates. Um, and then I one other thing, this is going to be uh, my, my example footage is going to be on uh, on Venice. Uh, which is a vanilla sieve. It's especially difficult on vanilla sieves. I, if you're, I would not recommend playing the Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia equivalent when you're practicing this because it, it will be so incredibly hard. I'm going to tell you what types of sieves you want to play and what sieves you should play, um, but just keep that in mind. Vanilla sieves, it, it's it's so hard to, to play this properly on vanilla sieves. It, it's, it's doable, and I'm going to show you how to do it, but it, it's very, very hard. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's jump in. So what are our strong Liberty Coastal sieves? The first one I'm going to mention is Carthage. Carthage fixes a lot of the problems Liberty has, which is gold. Um, also, it provides city connections with, for Liberty, is happiness. So once you hit that happiness policy on Carthage, and once you unlock um, the wheel, which allows you to get city connections, you will have no gold problems whatsoever. You'll be making so much money, which is why Coastal Liberty is so good because once it gets its harbors up, it is making at least 100 gold per turn. Um, so Carthage, very, very strong sieve. Would recommend playing it all the time. Australia, similarly, the worker is very, very good. Um, it's a sieve that doesn't really need to be on the coast, which makes it a very flexible sieve in terms of settling inland. Um the building is great because you can build it and you'll have time to build it because your cities have so many hammers. Uh, Philippines, very high momentum sieve, great to play. Would it, I would not recommend playing this if you're learning, but it's it's a very, very strong sieve. Um, 
The civs I'd recommend playing when you're learning are Carthage and Netherlands. Um, and and on that same note, um, Indonesia. So those three civs are kind of what I would stay with. So if, so if you're looking for what civs to kind of start with, I'd definitely lean towards Carthage, Netherlands, and Indonesia. They give a lot of gold. They give a lot of happiness. It's kind of what you're missing when you're playing Coastal Liberty. Um, they make your game feel a lot smoother. The nice thing about Coastal Liberty is once you have your harbors up, you're pumping so much gold, um, and it, it's so great. Um, you can kind of see this list below here. I'm not going to talk about every sieve, um, but if you're learning, play these sieves. The, the key I'm trying to make here, the point I'm trying to make, it can be played on every sieve, but it's very much preferred, especially when you're learning, to not to avoid the vanilla or even the A-level sieves. Stick with like the really good sieves for this because it's going to really make your game a lot easier and you're not going to struggle nearly as much. So on that note, let's jump into the guide. And the first place I want to start is on Pantheons. So... In my opinion, the best pantheon for Coastal Liberty is Starlight Guidance. It gives a lot of the resources and a lot of the yields we're looking for. It gives happiness. It gives culture. It gives faith. And it's on a building that makes that we want to be building in every single city regardless, which is which is the lighthouse. Um, so it, it, it thematically fits perfectly. It gives us everything we're looking for. It helps us kind of combine our game into a very cohesive um, thing. And the main thing I like it for is you're creating a building that is so high yield that it's almost, it, it often is more efficient to build this building than it would be to build a worker. So you'll see in a lot of my, I actually have two different build orders. One is Starlight, one is non-Starlight. In the Starlight ones, a lot of times we're building a lighthouse before workers, which might feel weird, but because this Pantheon is so powerful and because the happiness is so necessary, a lot of the times it's just best to build this. The other reason is gold is going to be such a problem. Workers are not necessary if we don't have tiles to improve. So in this case, it depends on the city. It depends on a lot of different things. The one thing that I, I've i kind of been avoiding making this guy, one of the reasons I've been avoiding making this guy is because it's so difficult to kind of create some catch-all type guide. Um and I'm not going to try to do that here. I'm going to try to kind of make broad strokes. The idea behind this is that you deviate and you kind of adjust accordingly. Um, yeah. God of the Sea is tremendous. I, I, seafood Ritual and God of the Sea is, is very similar to me. Um, seafood Rituals can definitely be better. God of the Sea is probably more consistent. Um, but it just depends where the fish are, right? If you have a lot of first ring fish, probably Seafood Ritual will be better. But if you have a lot of if you're settling your luxes and the fish are maybe second or third ring, it's going to be a little while before you get them in the first place, right? So God of the Sea is typically going to be better for consistency. The one problem with God of the Sea and the reason why it's on a different level than Starlight is be it's it's going to force you to move to um, opening a policy likely before you hit medieval. And that's not something we want to do. We want to, we want to, we want really want Explo with this build for the most part. Um, Unless you're Tonga, in which case Tonga is perfectly happy to take a, a Patreon opener. Um, but for the most part, we want to have Expo as soon as possible. So a lot of what we're doing is we're actually delaying culture intentionally. Seafood Ritual can kind of, or God, God seeing Seafood Ritual can kind of like um, push against you in that regard. But in that case, just don't build monuments type thing. Um, Ocean's Bounty is great. Um, but the problem is a lot of times the values in the fish and we're not going to be getting a lot of the fish right away. We're not improving the fish right away. We don't, we're not on as many workers as we are on, on inland Liberty. And because of that, a lot of our tiles aren't going to be like super improved as fast as we'd like. So I don't, I, I think this is this, this Pantheon is noticeably worse than the others, but I, I wanted to include it. And then bees, everything else. I'm, I'm and this isn't to say that you can't play anything else when you're playing these types of builds. You could, you could honestly, um, you could do craftsmen, you could do settlements, you could do a lot of different things. It's just a lot of the coastal pantheons are so good and so efficient in terms of the density of the yields that you're getting is so high on the coast. We want to typically we want to stick to them. All right. So let's go to Starlight. Starlight is um we're we're going to be following the same opener 
as we did before, a lot of what we're going to be doing is, um, you know, scout, scout, monument, worker, worker into settlers. Following settlers, this is what it should typically look like. So our cap is going to be going uh, granary right into a lighthouse. Um, sometimes I'll go lighthouse first. It depends on how many tiles I can share, how good the tiles are, right? If it's whales, I probably want the lighthouse. Um, if I'm working granary tiles or not, right? That kind of thing. But usually you're going to build the other one right afterwards anyway. And then we're going to be building cargoes. You'll notice a lot of what we're doing is cargo ships. Cargo ships are so important to the strategy and to just your game in general that we can't really um, delay them much. We need to get them out as soon as possible. Um, our first expand, this is key. Our first expand, in my opinion, should be going granary into lighthouse. And the reason I'm saying that is because oftentimes your first expand should be your closest and it should be the expand that catches your cap back up. And in order to do that, we need to go right into a granary. We need to build a lighthouse because like I said, it should be your closest expand and ideally it can work your cap uh, your cap tiles. This is especially important on coral because we don't want to be building a shrine and we want to be able to get a pantheon, but we never want to work the coral because the coral is a shit tile unless it has a lighthouse. So we can use our expand to work the coral um, and we won't lose anything for doing it. Uh, as an extension of that, um, we're going to go right into cargoes. That cargo is then going to feed our cap um, and catch it back up after it's done settlers. A lot of times this works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes my first expands making two cargos, and that's just kind of how it goes. Depends how many settlers we're going, right? Um, in this case, we're only doing seven um, in this example. But if you're doing like eight or nine, a lot of times your first expand is going to be making two cargo ships. Then we're going to go monument. Um, monuments. I, I a lot of people kind of con attribute monuments to how you unlock your next policy. I want you to kind of ignore that. Um, I want you to think of monuments as a way to get tiles. If you have a city that like, you have to settle it in a certain spot, maybe the barbarians are fucking you, whatever, and all of your stuff's second ring, you need to be building a monument, right? It's not, it's not a question of, oh, is my policy coming too slow? It's, hey, I need this monument because otherwise my game's fucked and the city, because I, I have no money, I can't buy the tiles. A lot of times when we're playing this, we're meeting CS to not bleed gold or we're just bleeding gold and that's totally fine. The point I'm trying to make is monuments are a tool to get extra tiles. They're not a tool to push policy. Um, so you can, uh, sometimes I'll be building monument first. It just depends, right? Um, usually it's lighthouse first, but yeah. Uh, then, then it should be, then it should look very similar to normal stuff. As we move down, you'll see kind of what I was talking about before. Um, the emphasis on workers is a lot less. And you'll see that I kind of trickle in workers in my first and second expands because those workers are going to go feed these last expands. The goal is to have one and a half workers per city, but you don't need them right away. A lot of the most important building, like I said, often is going to be a lighthouse. So that should be the building you're building first. Uh, then we can focus on building workers um, or granary, whatever. Um, then we can build monuments and aqueducts and all the good stuff that Liberty likes building. So hopefully this makes sense. And the main takeaway here is lighthouses first in cities that use lighthouses or that have tiles to work, of course. If not, build a granary, right? Like th th this isn't always an end-all be-all type thing. If you have more granary tiles that you're going to be working, build the granary. But oftentimes you have like one or two fish or one fish. It's worth it to build this lighthouse. Um, and then then you can build your monuments. The the thing about monuments that I want to highlight, like oftentimes I'll be in medieval and I won't have all my all my monuments up. That's just kind of how it goes. This isn't set in stone. I need I can't stress this enough. This is not a set in stone type thing. Um, you you kind of have to get a good feel for it. So now let's talk about non starlight build order. Um, this should look a lot more normal. We're we're not focusing nearly as much on lighthouses. Oftentimes our cities are going to be more towards granaries focus. The emphasis has been put back into workers um, to, for, frankly, to improve those uh, God of the Sea tiles, the Ocean's Bounty tiles, the Seafood Ritual tiles, right? But not just that. It's also like to build, to improve granary tiles and to chop and stuff like that. So this is not to say don't emphasize workers as much on Starlight you're still going to have about the same amount of workers. It's just the timing at which you get them is different. Um, so it, uh, everything else should look about the same. 
Um, and then I, I wanted to include this here because I've included in all my other guides, but if you've watched the other guides, you've probably played a good amount of Civ. You've, hopefully you've played some multiplayer and you kind of get a sense of what wonders are possible. You, I, I'm leaving off a lot of wonders here because you're not going to be able to get most of them. Like if you get Oracle as Coastal Liberty, some like something went completely wrong. Like, because there's no reason you should even be teching up there because your goal is to get to Medieval as soon as possible. And if you ever tech Philo, you're fucked. Uh, so a lot of priority for me is going to be on Colossus. Bor Bredor is so good on the coast. Oftentimes our, co our capital is not on fresh waters. So this is the best way to get a garden. Um, and obviously Starlight's great because it gives faith, but it's not enough faith to like have a full religion from. But with Borbador and Starlight, you can enhance and you can spread to everything. And you could even probably support a building if you build shrines in every city. So love Starlight. I mean, love uh, Borbador. Oftentimes, depending on happiness, um, I really like doing Notra right after uh, workshops. I'll go right to Notra. Um, a tier, you know, I have pyramids here. It's not super important. It's nice to have for sure. Um, especially if you have an inland, a couple inland cities, it, it scales. In, it's a wonder that scales incredibly hard, uh, as you all know. Um, but it, it's so contested from inland players; it's not usually not worth us tr even trying. Uh, great lighthouse. I have an asterisk next to this because um, I guess I deleted the thing. But um, I have an asterisk next to this because this is a this is a war wonder. Okay, I I, I think of great lighthouse very similarly to I do statue of Zeus. They're, they're war wonders. They're not sim wonders. You don't build this instead of a lighthouse. You build this after a lighthouse, okay? Maybe you build it and expand without one that has like five granary tiles or something. This is a war wonder. This is how, this is this is a very good wonder. It scales incredibly hard. You're not building this for the fucking free lighthouse and you're sure as fuck not building it for the one gold. Uh, I, uh, it's kind of like budget Borbador, um, but you know, it's nice. Great wall is often forgotten. Sometimes we can get it. Maybe we don't have an engineer point. This is what gives us the engineer point. Mausoleum sometimes, similarly. And Statue of Zeus, it's just usually just what's left. Um, wonders for us are not very important. A lot of times we're not even thinking about building wonders, um, especially on the coast, because there's so much other stuff to be doing. So I, I want to kind of put the emphasis, we're not really going for wonders. We're not engineering any of these. Um, maybe you engineer Notre Dame. That's it. Or Borbador. But a lot of times we're just going straight into profit. So, all right. That's all for this. Let's get into the gameplay. Um, this was a random roll. I um, I haven't played this game out. I, I did check the land. I kind of know what to expect a little bit. It is Liberty Coastal Land. And one thing I want to stress is, unlike inland, Coastal Liberty is not guaranteed you can't always play coastal liberty like you'd always play lib inland liberty and there's a big difference we have coral which is nice uh i like coral on coastal liberty because it gives us the pantheon like i mentioned before but also because it gives a lot of gold and gold is something we need a lot of i think in terms of priorities pearls is okay um it's on a similar level as whales and i think crab's probably the worst for coastal liberty but crab's probably the best for tradition so you know, you kind of get mixed things. So let's just jump in. Um, okay, this looks good. I mean, initially, here's my first thing. This city typically wouldn't be very good on, on, on coffee. But coastal is fine because I can steal this hill to, to grow into. I can steal this hill, the deer tile, to grow into. Um, and then, most importantly, if I settle on the coffee, I can work on... Um, one, two, three, four tiles. This is a this is a city that loves having a library, uh, a lighthouse up, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so that's a great first city on coffee. It's also on okay, animal. Okay, you know that's that's also very good. That helps the city out a lot. Um, and we're just gonna keep searching. I I when I'm playing i typically like to um scout my coastline first um that way i can kind of identify like is this a coastal lib game like what, what kind of game is this um rather than like trying to find one like um ruins and wonders and whatnot it's not to me it's not as important okay another unluck city that can work 
this and this. This is another city that really likes building Lighthouse first, so another great sign. And I, I think it would be helpful to kind of identify, like, is when how do you know what's Coastal Liberty or not, right? That This is a great question. I think, to me, Coastal Liberty is, do I see five cities that I can likely settle um, on the mainland? So one, two, three, four. So I'm, I'm on five cities right there. I think to me that's enough to justify it because I likely have islands. Now I know that's a gamble, and I know some people are going to be like, "I never get islands." Whatever. Like, on, on average, you will have at least one island, which can support usually one to two cities. Um, so, okay. So we now now we know we can't settle down there uh, without getting blocked, which is unfortunate. But that's okay. Oh, whoops. There. Okay, maritime is good. There's a pop ruin. Very strong. And then we're just going to keep scouting. Going monument. Um, now, you will notice that the emphasis on buying... Okay, so this is an inland sea. So we could potentially settle an, in, uh, an inland settle here. Or something so there's there's our five you'll notice that i'm not really putting a lot of priority in buying tiles i do think it's worth it to buy iron in general um but that being said you really have to be cautious with your money um you're gonna see me like not buying a lot of tiles compared to what i normally would okay, there's a ruin down there we're gonna send a, a lot of times i send my my units like pretty far and pretty wide just because i know I really need to get uh to get some gold, and I need to okay. Oh, uh, got writing. That that's a rune I probably wouldn't get because I think someone's there. So I now I know that this is off limits. I can hopefully settle a city here. All right, so we'll click Liberty here. Eleven is very normal. When I'll be bringing this back. That's a good spot for it to spawn. Um. It's not, oh, I could get that ruined, but I don't think I'd normally have it, so I'm not going to. That's another ruin I probably wouldn't get, so I'll skip. I'm gonna do the thing I normally um, recommend to y'all. Um, and I'm going to work one food so I can starve if I need to. Um, then I'm going to be bringing these uh, these units back a little bit uh, just because I want to kind of make sure that no other barb camps are spawning, that I can get my settler out as soon as possible. And I want to get a worker from Bangkok. Okay, it's growing these horses. So that's good. That's what we're looking for. That's a hand axe. That's sussy. Um, and in this case specifically... I have to go to calendar. I have to go calendar. And then after calendar, I want to go to optics. You know, you could argue that it's not 100% necessary to go to calendar here um, because going optics would allow me to build um, would allow me to build a um, sorry, I can't think right now. Allow me to build a lighthouse, which is Hopefully, the Pantheon I'm looking to take, um, but uh, settling on the on the Lux is going to give me happiness and hopefully get me to that. Ideally, I get a natural Golden Age before before I spawn in, but we'll see. Or before I get the policy, um, and with the policy, I can natural. Um, so we'll we'll just go calendar for consistency's sake. A lot of times, like you might need trapping, you might need a number of different things. I'm lucky in this in this case because I have assault regional. Um, let's bring this guy in. I really am kind of annoyed that he's not spawning a worker for me. Okay, good. That's what I was hoping for. And I'm going to put this bad boy in the water and we're going to improve that coral. Okay, there's our lovely worker. 
And can we heal it up? All right, now, which settle do we want to do first? So there's two different trains of thought here. The first thought is, okay, I can go down here and I can clear this camp, which does look good. And because of this, um, this camp, it would actually help me clear it. I'm worried that a camp would spawn up here. Right now, I don't think it can because of the proximity here. So I'm actually going to go here first. The other reason is I want to work this coral tile as soon as I possibly can. Um, I want to also buy this tile because it doesn't look like I'm growing there. And it's a tile I want to work in this city. So um, we're going to buy that. Again, I'm being... It, it, it scares me to buy those tiles. Um, so just keep that in mind like a lot of the decision i'm making is because either um i know i'm settling on luxes or something like that right it, it's not just like oh you know i'm uh i just always am buying these like no you're not always buying these at all um oftentimes you're kind of like avoiding it um, okay, so this is exactly what I was talking about. I can take that horse and I can give it to this city. Now it has some tiles to work. And it'll be working that, um, that initial thing. So in this case, since there's no first ring granaries, um, I don't really want to go granary. And because there's, a there's like two chops here, I'm actually going to go worker first. This is what I was saying where, you know, those sh that sheet is a general guide on which I tend to tend to how I tend to play my games but it's not an end-all be-all by any means and um, oftentimes I find myself deviating so it's still I think a, a good sense of like how we should be playing but not not as, as regimented as the inland version so ideally I go here um, I want the archer to come in And he did. Nice. Um, I can just kind of let this sit for a bit. Cool. I'm going to be, pop be popping in and out with that guy. Oh, whoops. So I just traded away that, so I got to remember. That. All right, settler policy. Realistically, this settler, I guess this settler can go down here. We can go like on Lapis or something. We could even go for the salt, but I don't really need the salt. I have salt over here as well. And it's already a dupe. Um, let's get a chop. We can private shop here. We'll do that. So we'll go here. Side from oh, island. That's always nice. And obviously this goes without saying, but um, you should always be uh, radaring with your workers. So I'm gonna put throw this into the water just for illustrative purposes. Right, work that. And I just finished optics, which is perfect, so I'll go right into a lighthouse. I'm gonna chop it out. Save the chop there. And into another settler. We're gonna go settle here. And I can go. I can probably leave with this work with this scout now. Um. Yeah, I absolutely can. We can give this another hill. So now we'll go right into trapping. Okay, that barb is going to make me so I don't get any steals, which is not fun. That camp is annoying. So we'll go lighthouse because our pantheon is coming along nicely. Um, so I'm going to chop here. It doesn't look like this is the thing I was saying, but like it doesn't look like I'm growing to these this coral tiles. So it's often what 
you're gonna have to you're forced to buy is your lux tiles which is why we're not able to buy anything else because we have to buy our lux tiles um, beautiful island holy fuck you're like right here Okay. And where do I want to go? Potentially in the water. Why not? How many? I'm on one trade, correct? Yes. Good. Okay. And we will move hmm, slowly but steadily. And then let's buy this bad boy. All right, radar. Looks like we have an island up here. Obviously this island. Do we have anything lower? We do, we have something here. Um, we have another island up here and it looks like there's one up here. So it looks like we have a good amount of space. So that's good. Another settler, let's send this on the island and let's go swimming. Um, here, I'm just going to be teching, you know, just Lux Techs. Not much to it. Just Lux Techs. The reason I put that scout in the water is... Okay, that's annoying. I guess they cleared this camp. I was not prepared for that. Uh, we did do trapping, so I can go and that then we're gonna go here good 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 cool kind of worried about this thing dying so I need to let that sit which sucks four turns on that lighthouse we're gonna finish improving this fishy because why not let's grab our pantheon that we love so much 13 culture pretty relevant doesn't really matter here down nice and how the fuck did that thing get there I will never know. Kind of want to let this sit one time. I think at 38 or at, at um, 42, it should be fine. So we're going to finish that, which we did. Great. Now I can unwork this shitty fucking coral and finish this lighthouse turn. Or I think two turns faster. Now we should be good. It's a hand axe, so we were fine the whole time anyway, but you know, we didn't know that. No way we could have known that. Um, can we finish this this turn? This is a big deal if we can. So I'm gonna be trying to work as many hammers as I possibly can. I am 0.4 off, so I definitely can finish it. Let's do one of these guys. We're gonna finish that. Nice. Okay. We go bronze, and then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna work the whales right away. Prove that. Prove that. Then we can go. Let's go up. To, um. It looks like we have two close islands there, so let's do those first. Then we can go up to the one up here. Okay. So we got another coral up. So let's spawn in a, a thing in the jig. Perfect. So now we can work these, these beautiful tiles and go right into a granary. And similarly, um, in this city, we can do the same thing. Just make sure we finish that this turn. A little early on that tech. 
on how fast I'm teching, but it's fine. Lighthouse because I have one workable um, tile there. I'm actually growing to this, which is nice. Um, part of me kind of wants to just like explore a little bit with, with this worker. Um, I need to spawn in a thing. All right, and then beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. And just similarly, we go right into a lighthouse. Um, there, I know there's a barb over there, so there's no way that they'd spawn that that worker. Here's a good example of a city that needs a monument. There's a lot of good tiles this has, but there's no way it's going to grow to it. So this is going to go monument right now. This can go wherever, and then this can explore. And then light. Similarly, lighthouse is incredible on in that city too. And I need to make sure I'm growing to that coral. Let's spawn in that old faithful to, you know, um, uh, make So this is a scary bit. I'm worried about a barbarian archer. Um, really don't want to have to deal with one. That would suck. Let's bring this over here and chop. There's our settler. So let's bring that over there. And we can go one more settler. How many are we on? We're on five here, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so this city needs to work, have its hammers back. So let's get those hammers back. Except I'm just seeing this. Sure, why not? Alright, this was lucky. Um, the reason I went up here is because I knew there was no tile here and I knew that the barb wasn't on this iron. So, this is a good spot. Obviously, on barb is where I want to be. Um, Happiness is looking incredibly good, mostly just because um, there's the archer camp. That's us. So I'm going to bring this warrior up to help with that, help with that guy. Um, and then we'll keep going. Let's move along. So my scout should be able to tank that pretty easily. I'm actually going to natural here, which is so rare. Um, because usually you just, you're so happy short. But there was a lot of unlucked cities in this, uh, in this example. So um, very fortunate in that case. Um, but honestly, naturaling this early is kind of bad. Um, it's going to push our culture too fast. You know, it's fine. So here's a good example of I need more workers. I don't know how I'm going to get them. This is a good time to build a cargo ship. And this is working. Um, it's going to be working granary tiles. So I actually don't need to go into the lighthouse right away. And I can just go straight into granary. So we're going to be building. Um, I could use a mine there, I think. Maybe here. This is a good, a really good city because there's no granaries right now to be building extra workers for us. Um, in fact, it actually could go cargo, and this could go work. So let's do that. This can go cargo, and then we're going to send the cargo to Candia. I'm going to chop here. Now I'm production focused because I'm bad. Don't listen to me for how to play the game. All right. And then we're going to improve that because why not? Oh, my fucking God. I can't make this shit up. And this is why we didn't starve completely. Because we wouldn't have been able to do this otherwise. Okay, that's annoying. I'm going to bring this guy up. All right. See, he's now scared of me because I just decided I wanted to, to sit. So the way I like doing this is I like scouting with workers, especially when I don't know where the barb archer is. The barb archer is there. Okay. 
So I wasn't, I didn't have anything to worry about at the time. But in the case that it could shoot my shit, I'd be really, really unhappy um, with that outcome. So let's go here. Remember, the reason for our happiness is, I mean, there's a number of reasons. You know there's a barb right there, right? Yeah. So, work got taken. That's fine. Don't really care. I want to put this city probably on barb. Maybe here. And because it's an archer camp, I can get that back pretty easily. So, I'm not, I'm not particularly worried. So, I can, I can chill here. Barb's likely to move again. From there. Now let's build the more workers. Actually, this needs like a scout or something. And we'll get a lighthouse here. Okay, another worker. I'm not I'm not like panicking, I'm not worried. This this will move. Yep. If if it slows me down a little bit, so be it. It's fine. Um, there are worse things. It's not the end of the world. Um, if this was like an inland position, I'd, I'd be very, very annoyed. But in this spot, you know, it is what it is. It, ha it happens. Here's another good example of like, I need to build a worker here just because there's a bunch of chops. So I'm going to do that. Let's go on spot here. Or we can go down. Yeah, let's just go down. I don't know where the Lux is. It's got to be like here. Um, okay, there's our lovely worker. No, that's our promo. It's a waste. Where's the camp? There's the camp. Okay. So that's kind of annoying. Um, again, lighthouse first. Hope you're seeing a trend. Perfect. Okay, had a feeling it was there. This is what I was talking about. Because the cities came on so fast and there was a lot of, like, I guess kind of almost free time. Um... Uh, we're not we're having like happiness problems like a little delayed um, instead of like when they would normally be so this is fine having an extra worker uh, scout here actually is good because it allows us to um, that's by that tile it allows us to kind of help clear this camp on the island clearing camps on the island can be really obnoxious at times so any help with that is nice then this city 50 old that is very nice so there's no reason to build a lighthouse here right like i hope that's clear there's no reason to build one if anything i'm going to build a, a monument but in this case i kind of just want a granary and i can send this worker after it chops up um similarly i think this just needs another worker um so this finished its lighthouse so i kind of want to be giving my my cap, some of the good tiles, so let's work that. Um, this looks good. I mean, we could go another worker. This could have finished if I wasn't so terrible. And then, you know, in this case, like, I want to start roading, right? Um, you're still playing Liberty. You still get the road bonuses. So... I'm going to start moving towards um, my road bonuses, and we'll go from there. So, this up. Good. And then I have some time here. This is like a time where I would like look around, see what everyone else is building. Um, if I needed to, you know, if I needed to do something like build a monument or whatever like I could do that now I'm worried about this culture gen because uh, I'm going to be chaining my GA here and I'm going to be going right to metal casting so 
Maybe in this case it's fine to build a monument, but I don't really need it in this city. So maybe I just go library. Um, if, if I had a cargo to build, I'd build it in there. But, you know, we're, we were a little... Um, we were a little proactive with, with building them, so we don't need that, but yeah, just something to think about. Right, so now the question is, where do we send this cargo? Well, we're not sending it to our cap. We're already sending one to our cap. Oh, it just finished. Um... Like, I would definitely click a wonder normally, um, but we can just go to this. I mean, we could just improve here. Just normal stuff. Monument here is actually very strong. Um, so we'll finish this road up. Start on that road. And then see how happiness is now kind of catching up to us. It's kind of expected. Um, I don't like killing these barbs, but I need to get some unit up there. Um, but yeah, so happiness is starting to become an issue. Um, this is fine. We kind of we anticipated this. Do we have actually an extra? We have one extra coral and we are, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's correct. So we're improving this. We're gonna be improving that one shortly. I kind of just want to focus on hammers here. Work on that. There we go. Oh, there's that guy. All right, there's our last island. Does it matter when I get there? No, it doesn't. Um... This cargo is able to fix all of the problems from that other city. So we'll see what it looks like before we send this somewhere. But um, typically I like sending our, our latest cities up with the cargo. That way it helps catch them up. And our gold's pretty good because we're in GA. We're going to be chaining here, actually, uh, because we GA'd early. Oftentimes you don't have that luxury, so... There. Um, we can go Circus Coliseum, stuff like that now. Look at these tiles, they're looking so good. Okay, that's a problem. That horsey. Okay, so we can go here. It'll hurt our initial happiness, but it's fine. We can go into a granary. Let's spawn in another old faithful. Sure, we can work together. Okay, minus four. I want to bring this over to the Lapis, so let's buy that. Even though it's a dupe, it doesn't matter. Um, oftentimes we're able to get those trades regardless if they're dupes or not, just because we can kind of conceal which one's a dupe and which one's not. Um, and we'll go into Circus again. Grab that. Okay, so do we want the salt? I mean, this is just an objectively better city, so we can do that. And we can leave that now. We'll bring this scout up. And hopefully, we can work on getting that camp soon. All right, grew there, which is great. All right, time for aqueducts. I'm not panicking at all. I mean, I'm not even a little bit worried about happiness. Yes, it's negative, but it's fine. 
kind of just par for the course. Um, when you're playing this build, a lot of times you have happy problems. And it's just kind of a matter of hope, hoping it doesn't slow you down too much. Um, I could have been a bit more diligent with my um, with improving my luxes. So this is obviously this uh, the goal of this is not to show like super impressive sim it's mostly to show i mean you guys have seen my videos before but it, it's mostly to show kind of the themes and like what i'm looking for as i'm settling how the early game should go what's normal um stuff like that so we can go circus here right like we we don't need to prioritize the aqueduct right away because okay wait, i got that up so i need to spawn in another one of these wait, i have five up so I should have four, right? Yeah, because I'm not trading with anyone. So. Okay, the lighthouse, right? Reason we're doing these lighthouses, and well, one of the reasons is because it gives us happiness. It fixes a lot of the problems that we need. This is a great city to feed. Um, can't even feed it yet though because there's no fucking it's too far so let's send it here and then we can we can feed it from there so this is this is worrying i i one of the things that i think um i i don't think people forget about this but i guess they kind of deal with it wrong a lot of newer players do not properly fear coastal um boats and how they spawn so i know that if I don't kill this and it spawns a unit. There's only one one tile it can go or two tiles it can go. I could get lucky as fuck and it could go into here or more likely it just goes outside there. So depending on where it goes is like, it, it's varying degrees to how hard I get shafted. But we're gonna be building our aqueducts, you know, all that good stuff. Okay, that's really good. That is so good, in fact. Okay, last time we're getting this worker, probably. Want to shoot there so it still has the option to spawn. I don't want, even though it might be unlikely it does, I still want to kind of make sure that I'm not completely fucking myself and there's still a chance that. Um, that it can. Okay, that's another Lux that we could potentially get a trade for. That's another Lux we could potentially get a trade for. And we got that clamp cleared. Hallelujah. Um, let's go Lighthouse now. All right, we're gonna go another cargo here. Kind of can see the theme of what I'm doing. It's it's very fluid. Um, hopefully this is pretty intuitive to the people watching. If it's not, go watch the normal Liberty Guide. And notice that after this, honestly, this should just go up here. That way this worker can come down. This worker can come down. And I'm constantly like moving which workers are, like no worker is like assigned to a city, if that makes sense. Um, also, something I like to do occasionally not always, um, because if you always do it, then people kind of expect it from you. Um, but one thing I like occasionally doing is I'll I'll skip uh, I'll skip aqueducts right away because I I know I won't have the happiness regardless. So um, if I skip aqueducts, I can afford I can afford like getting an earlier colossus, which is obviously super nice. So, founded a religion. Uh, obviously, we have Sripada, so that kind of is cheating. But I, in when it comes to religion, I mean, it's the same type of stuff you'd normally look for in Liberty. I think the emphasis is more so on devout um, because you should have your circuses up and stuff. All right. We're going to have to let this roll. I probably should not have taken devout, actually. Cause, uh, that didn't affect anything. <laughs> Spawn a unit and kill the camp. Great. Done that. Let's move over 
over here, make sure we're staying happy as much as we possibly can. And I'm kind of trying to speed through this because this shouldn't be as more as handholdy as um, as other versions. I hope it's clear kind of where I went wrong. Um, you know, I this game obviously it's good. If you look at demos, like obviously we're having a good game. Um, but that, or getting that golden age that fast pushed our culture a little too quickly, which made it so that um, we can feed the missile now. Which made it so that we were not able to roll oh, max duration one turn um, to get Explo. Obviously, Explo is something we really, really want here. And I can't even, like, I don't even think I'm able to, to do the thing uh, properly with this. Um, it's actually so close. It's 15 off. Yeah. Could have built, like, a library here or something. I'm just gonna go around and try to venture venture off. Um, so this isn't a perfect perfect game by any means, but what it is is it's a way for you to kind of see how I would play the early game, how I would like sell these cities. Is this game going well? Yeah, I think this is going especially well. 61 metal is actually quite fast for an eight city liberty. Or wait, we're nine. Yeah, okay, nine nine naturaling is just not a thing usually. Oh wait, no, we're totally fine. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so never mind. Okay. Never mind. I'm so stupid. I thought I thought we had to go to medieval right then. Okay, we're good. No, this is this is going well. Um we could play a little longer potentially. Maybe what would I do here normally? I mean, my my faith's quite good, and I don't even have shrines. I, I'm I'm a big fan of building shrines, um, on, on these kinds of starts. So what would I do here? And like building shrines in in my expands. I'm, I'm talking. Let Let's just go. Let's go engineer, and we can go straight to uh, to Boro. I think it's very fair to assume we would get it. I think certain players prioritize certain wonders more. I think Goro is one of the more underrated wonders. Um, I think if you play multiplayer, you can kind of. I think it, it's fair to fair to assume. I, mean, I think the more egregious thing is that Colossus would 100% be gone. Um, I like built using monuments in in this like a good example of how I like using monuments here is. Um, or shrine, sorry, is like overflow for for when I get workshops. Yeah, I don't. We wouldn't get Colossus here. Um, let's just build a shrine instead. So the nice thing is, once you settle these islands and you have units around on the islands, you can go get all the ruins. Super underrated strat. All right, now you can kind of see we are um, okay. Just got, just got a pop ruin, I guess. Um, we're kind of we're really cooking now. Workshop. Lighthouse it's a workshop. Workshop. I don't have the happiness to support um to support building aqueducts in all my like little cities right away. So Happy 
happiness. Nice. But I will say, that's not to say you shouldn't prioritize work, uh, aqueducts. I think in general you should. I think in this city, like, I should probably go aqueduct because I'm feeding it. Um, we're kind of just, you know, flowing through everything. We're kind of... Making sure everything, I'm 100% rushing right now, um, so my sim is definitely taking a hit, but still think we're having quite quite a strong game. Would 100% be relevant in every single normal lobby. No GA, 160, um, um, like 200 food, 120 hammers, no GA on turn 60, it's quite good. Um, obviously, like there's been better games, and obviously, um, we're not playing. We're playing a vanilla sieve. We're on nine cities, right? There's a lot of reasons why this game is going to scale very, very hard. Um, so, hopefully, this has been illustrative. Um, I think something also. I've noticed is people are really scared to settle inland uh, because they know if you settle coastal as an inland player, you get taxed. I, I think that is a fair thing to be afraid of, but I don't think it's completely justified. Um, I, I think there's, there's, there's reasons why you shouldn't settle inland, and most of the people don't know the right reasons, so I don't think it's warranted um, for most people to, to have that one. That fear. And you can kind of see we're kind of closing in and finishing every, every, uh, every city's improvements pretty quickly. Um, that's because a lot of the improvements are actually in the water. No, fuck you. But you'll see, I'm bleeding gold. And I will be bleeding gold for a while. And there's really not much I can do about that. Um, I could build markets and stuff, but that's not how you fix gold bleed. The way you fix gold bleed is you book it to... Um, you book it to, to compass. And this is one thing I like when I, um, this is one reason getting, uh, what the hell? It's interesting. One reason getting Colossus is nice because the base gold is, is noticeable and meaningful. Um, but you see like we're, we're, our pop is really high Pushing a lot of science. We're at 63 pop on turn 66. So that's quite good. Past 200 food. We'll go to 75 here. Um, this is going to be a longer video, obviously. But we're not contesting any wonders, obviously, slow this down. But kind of goes to sh or not contesting any wonders has brings its own problems, I guess. That's the way I would want to say that. Well, we'll go for Boro here. I think I think it's fair to get Boro in this spot. Gold up. See, this is a problem. Like we're not growing to that coral, and we don't have the money to buy it. So the reason I'm not spending any money now is because I want to get this rubber, and it's a 50/50 if I get the rubber or not. So hopefully our governor pulls through. And. This is the point where one of the priorities should definitely be on monuments. Um, after, like I said, I, I often don't have them all in my, in my expands by the time I hit Medieval. Um, oh, it's because I have, okay. Well, you normally I would be able to do that. All right, Whoa. 
obviously we need stables up. Explode. Follows for the. Oh, and we won the 50 50. Good shit. Hoorah. Cool. Shrine. Build. And then at this point, you know, we've kind of hit a point where we have like too many workers. Um, and we can start thinking about deleting them. Um, but we have every single tile improved pretty much. Awesome. Minus 21 GPT. See that? That is not good. Uh, I like taking all happiness and culture. I've said this before, but happiness, culture, um, all stuff that's obviously super important on, on Explo. Pushing through those policies is integral to your game. You know, I'm going to finish this just because I want to. I want to make up for the fact that I definitely would have gotten at least one wonder. So I think now is a fair time to get it. If you have a problem with that, fuck the kill. Alright, I'm actually, some miracle I'm growing to that copper. And I like building my, my caravanisseries because oftentimes like I just need them because I need the gold. Uh, but this minus 17 is not uncommon if you get to a point where at minus 17 and you're like, what did I do wrong? Probably didn't do anything wrong. You just, you just don't have any city connections and you're getting fucked. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm kind of sucks to be losing that much gold. I, I mean, that much science. Obviously, you know, Colossus can fix that problem, but you're not always going to have Colossus. Let's go up here. Get this guy, this guy can come down. Zara, 55, looking good. Really need to be feeding Splato still. So it looks like we still are, which is nice. Um, which needs, which city needs help? Patris definitely wants some help. So let's send Patris. Let's send Venice. Cargos. And you know, spreading and working specialists is giving us gold, it's giving us food, it's giving us um, hammers. This is why one other another reason why guru ship is so good. Making science again, hooray! Yep, had a feeling it wasn't making any food there. Need a trader out. Sixteen, lots of hammers now that we have the stable, and then we can actually use something that our sieve gives us. So that's cool. We're at twenty-six faith per turn, right? We we, we have built exclusively shrines um, and lighthouses, and that's where almost all of our faith is coming from. Boro is giving us some faith. Repod is giving us some faith, but kind of see my point where it's like you can support all different types of religions here um i'm gonna do sensor maker and you're not limited to to what you can take because the pantheon gives us a lot of a lot of what we're looking for um so really really nice and i'm just gonna be building those markets and stuff and bringing this warrior down bringing the camp. like all, all the normal stuff did i just I guess I'm gonna go. We'll go to until we get unis. How's demos? 200 hammers. 233. Got that now. Now I can build. Now I can buy a missionary and spread to my remaining cities. Uh, 
Again, none of this should look weird. Um, kind of just plain, very, very, very standard. Um, it should look very similar to what you'd expect, frankly. Um, no libraries, doesn't matter. Who cares? Um, we'll fix that problem when we get there. Like this city also doesn't have a library. It doesn't even have an aqueduct yet. Or it does have a library. Whoops. That's probably a mistake. Chop, 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 chop. Market. Chop. Delete. Chop. So we're going to be one turn late to 75 unis, but the fact that we're this close on nine city coastal liberty kind of tells you um, just how strong this, this play is, um, if you can execute. And if you're playing not a vanilla sieve, like I recommend... Um, you know, you're not going to have any problems. You won't gold bleed whatsoever if you're playing Carthage, for example, right? Um, you won't. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, a lot of the problems that what we faced are fixable, and that's kind of the nice thing about about this the strat is that. A lot of sieves fix all of the problems. Now, of course, the main question I'm going to get is, well, how do you fix no land? Or, like, and then, you know, to that I say, shut the fuck up. Um, but the reality is, it's like there's 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 a remedy for almost all this, all the problems. Um, so. So I, I just wanted to, I'm only playing this out because I want to show you kind of the magic of what happens when you click explode. Stable there. This really wants a stable, but none of the tiles are improved just because the city's so far away. But even if it's so far away, it doesn't matter. The city's so strong, regardless. And you see kind of like what I'm, what I'm, like how the game's going. Like I'm absolutely speed rushing through all this stuff like i probably should have switched these tiles around in my cap so it was bigger by now but like even with all of that like i'm building amphitheaters before unis in every single city i'm at almost 300 food i'm at 233 hammers so let's let's look next turn What is our pop? 85 pop. Okay. A hundred and thirty science. I don't even have all of my libraries. I hope I'm kind of explaining to you guys how incredibly strong this shit can be. Four turn. Four turn. Three turn. Two turn, three turn, four turn. That's a five, but that'll be a three or a four. Five. So we are at 234 hammers. I take this policy, best policy. You always start here, then you go to naval tradition, then you fill out this side. Um, Treasure fleets is super, super good in this build. So we're at 234. 264. We're at 264 hammers. No GA playing a vanilla sieve on nine city liberty on turn 76. Guys, that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you guys, there, I hope there's some takeaway to this. Um, this wasn't even that great of a rollout. I, I, as I mentioned, like I kind of fucked up my, my chaining. I GA too fast. Um, but yeah, like, I hope this has been illustrative. I hope you guys give it a shot. Let me know if you have any, let me know what questions you guys have. Let me know 
Um, yeah, just let, let me know like what you think. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Thanks for all the, leaving all the comments, all the support. If you enjoyed this kind of video, um, uh, don't forget to subscribe. A lot of people aren't subscribed. I don't really care, but it's fun to hit arbitrary goals. Um, as I mentioned before, I don't make any money off this. I don't. I will refuse to monetize all my stuff. So the only way I plan to. I guess get the word out if you want to call it that is by you guys sharing. So keep doing that. You guys are awesome. And thanks for watching.